Hey Viola Kingdom, I'm James, and I'm tired of people saying that Viola doesn't have any hard repertoire. There are actually tons of incredibly difficult pieces written for Viola, and if you don't believe me then watch this video to the end, because the top few pieces on this list are absolutely ridiculous. My rankings are mostly based on technical difficulty, but I also took musical difficulty into consideration. This list only includes pieces that were originally written for viola, so no transcriptions, and I stuck mainly to standard repertoire and pieces that are well established in the viola world. At number 10, we have the heart and soul of the viola literature, the Walton Concerto. It was written in 1929 for one of the first great viola soloists and advocates, Lionel Tertis, and fittingly challenged the limits of the instrument for that time. Every movement is difficult, but the second movement is probably the hardest, with tricky runs that whip their way up and down the instrument. Number 9 takes a step back from the larger setting of the concerto, instead optimizing the viola piano duo, the Rebecca Clark Sonata. The opening of this piece is iconic and virtuosic, but the difficulty continues into the second movements. Clark clearly loved the viola's character and wrote with unabated expression. In doing so, however, she disregarded what would lie well as long as it was possible. We make the ensemble even smaller with number 8, Stravinsky Elegy for Solo Viola. Although it doesn't sound that flashy or exciting, it's actually notoriously difficult to perform well. If you play anything out of tune, the piece won't make sense, and you constantly have to be ultra-aware of your borum levels to make the double stops speak in a balanced and smooth way that suits the depressing mood of the piece. On top of that, you need a complete understanding of how the voices appear and disappear throughout the piece in a similar manner as the writing of Bach. Jumping back to the viola orchestra combo, number 7 on this list is one of my personal favorites, Hindemith's Der Schwan and Dreher Viola Concerto. Hindemith was an incredible violist himself, and that allowed him to truly stretch the limits of what was possible in terms of double stops, arpeggios, speed, and unusual tonality. He actually wrote two other concerti that were just as hard or harder, but none of them stayed in the repertoire as solidly as Der Schwan and Dreher. The first two movements are hard enough, but the final movement is a marathon of thrilling variations on the Der Schwan and Dreher theme which is meant to imitate our hurdy-gurdy. Number six is the earliest and only classical work on this list, Paganini's Sonata per la Grande Viola. It's a little known fact that Paganini was so avid about the viola that he commissioned Hector Berlioz to write a viola concerto for him. This ended up being Harold in Italy, but Paganini thought it wasn't hard enough, so he said, fine, I'll do it myself. And he wrote this. It basically has everything you would expect from Paganini, including double stops, runs, false harmonics, arpeggios, all going at breakneck speed that requires a flawless and refined technique to perform successfully. As opposite as you could get from Paganini's Sonata, at number 5 on this list, we have Ligeti's Sonata for Solo Viola. Similarly to Stravinsky's Elegy, the modern tonality of this piece means that every double stop must be perfectly in tune or the piece will lose its meaning, especially when a significant number of those notes are microtones between the normal pitches of the diatonic scale. However, Ligeti extends that challenge over the length of a 30-minute sonata with the added challenge of the third movement, called Loop, which progressively gets harder as more layers are added and the tempo dramatically accelerates. Hello, editor here. You forgot about the Schnick Cavilla Concerto. Number four is another piece that is notoriously difficult to play in tune. 
the Bartok Viola Concerto. William Primrose, the greatest violist of all time, commissioned this work, asking Bartok to disregard the technical limitations of the instruments. Bartok absolutely delivered, producing a deeply musical work which freely moved between the registers of the viola. The hardest technical issue is the leaps and skips that are almost constantly present in the work, demanding a ridiculous amount of extensions and quick shifts that make it exhausting to play. The last movement also moves at a terrifying speed, and it comes at a point where the performer's hands are already exhausted from playing the first two movements. Number three is probably the least known piece on this list, but it has gradually been gaining popularity among violists. Miklos Rosa's Viola Concerto. It's a gorgeous and wild work by a 20th century composer known mostly for his film scores. It truly uses the full range of the instruments, and employs quite a bit of technical flash to build excitement throughout. At 36 minutes, it's much longer than most other viola concerti, making it also a challenge in stamina and concentration. A decade later, violists gained an even greater fear with number two on our list, Penderecki Concerto. Penderecki basically took what made the Rosa and Bartok concertos so hard and tripled the frequency of those challenges. There are constant leaps around the instruments, and the chromatic nature of this piece's main idea makes the intonation even more difficult to conceptualize. Penderecki also condensed this work into a solo viola version called the Cadenza. Either way, the piece goes hard all the way through and remains one of the greatest challenges in history for violists. Finally, the hardest piece on our list is just built different, and that's Berio's Sequenza No. 6 for solo viola. Berlin Philharmonic principal violist Ami Gross named this as the hardest piece he has ever played, and it's easy to see why. This piece forces you to do crazy things with both your left and right hands for 11 minutes straight with no breaks. It uses extended bow techniques that require an extra level of skill, and physically, this piece looks exhausting to play with all of the intense scrubbing and constantly shifting around the instruments. But even more taxing is the emotional toll of playing a piece that sounds so broken and angry. Just look at what it did to this poor guy and his bow. Anyways, if you didn't think so already, I hope you now agree that the viola has some awesome and nasty pieces written for it. If you do agree, if you disagree, or if you think you know another piece that belongs on this list, I'd love to hear about it in the comment section, and see you in the next video. Until then, viola came out.